Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Back on the JAT half-baked amplifier. It's now working much better. It turns out I blundered and didn't have the amplifier designed completely. I kind of had an aha moment after I did the other video. So okay, that, I see what's going on now. And I wondered if somebody would call me out on that and yep, somebody did call me out. So I want to go back here and fix the amplifier and make it work correctly. I'm filming this. I have this blue construction paper. What I do is I just film that and then add text to the video and that makes a thumbnail so I don't have to upload anything. That just saves a little bit of effort there. Look at this. I cleaned up the bench. It was just getting so messy. Couldn't find things, little components all over the place. I got all that sorted out and put away. Clean the bench up. Be good for a few months anyway. And I know some of you are asking, what about the main amp project? Well, like I said, I'm not in a rush to get this done. But I'm itching to get it done. And don't worry, I will get to it. I just want to do some other things. Okay, back to the schematic. What I have here is a simple inverting amplifier circuit here will help me explain what's going on. So yeah, this is your typical op-amp symbol. And in an inverting configuration, the uh, non-inverting pin is connected through a resistor to ground. And of course you have your feedback resistor connected to the inverting terminal. And we have the signal source connected to the inverting pin here so any signal going here will be inverted on the output so what is the gain of the circuit we can say this is a 10k resistor but it's indeterminate because I don't know what the impedance of the signal source is and in real world use this is probably going to be very low so normally there is a resistor here And the gain is roughly the ratio of these two. So if this is a 10K, this is a 1K. So it's 10 divided by 1, and the gain is 10. But since that resistor wasn't there, and, the, and if this impedance is very low, the gain is going to be extremely high. So that's essentially what is wrong with this amplifier. I inadvertently left out the resistor that goes on the input. So what was happening is you know we're getting negative feedback from the output and it goes through these two resistors here which are fairly high value and I know for a fact that the little preamp that I use for you know driving these circuits has extremely low gain. It has its own negative feedback the effective resistance is probably a fraction of an ohm. So essentially what happens is it sets the gain so high that there's very little loop gain for negative feedback to do anything. So the amplifier had a lot of distortion and you know as you remember the gain was real high so there was a lot of noise and it just wasn't doing so well. I didn't expect a lot from the amplifier being a very simple design, but you know, it should be doing better. Now in that condition, the gain is roughly the collector impedance of this transistor to its emitter impedance, which is 22. That's why when I unplugged the bootstrap capacitor, the signal went much smaller, as you remember back in the other video, and I'll demonstrate that again. Because the bootstrap circuit acts as a current source, one attribute of a current source is very high impedance. So when I plug that capacitor in, gain shot up significantly. Okay, so to fix the amp, I will insert a resistor right here of some value. But first, let's look at the amplifier again on the scope without that resistance so we can have something to compare in this video. Okay, I got the amplifier hooked up, 8 ohm load on the output. 
signal source, little preamp, and power supply turned on. So let me get you pointed to the scope and we'll look at the signals. Okay, so here is the signal. And it's clipping. Back it off. Turn that up. So we're close to clipping. We can turn that off so we can see the FFT. Look at this. This is the fundamental. Very small second order harmonic. Huge third. A blip of a fourth. That's the pilot signal. A fifth. Remember our pilot signal is at 1%. So these are very large. So what's going on? Why don't, why don't I have that large second harmonic? So let's see. Look at that. I got a connection problem. This is why I don't like these socket boards. Yeah, now the thing's wigged out. I don't want to solder this thing up. But look at that. Now I have a huge second order harmonic. And I just adjust this wire. This is the what the feedback wire. And it's throwing this thing into a tizzy. Yeah, just moving this stuff around. It may be something else. Look there, it's smaller now. But anyway, so you can see how these socket boards kind of screw with your circuit. It's better to put them to solder them up. We have good connections, but like I said, I'm not going to do that for the circuit. But to cut to the chase, a lot of distortion. And like I said, I didn't expect a lot from the circuit, but this is a little bit much. And the gain is quite high. Okay, I set the output to roughly 2 volts. Let's see what signal level is going in. Really? That's all? Gotta be more than that. There we go. Around 22 millivolts is the signal I'm putting in. It's kind of noisy too. That's why you're getting all that noise in the speaker. Because it's like I said, it's amplifying the noise from the preamp. If you remember from the last video, I put the microphone of the camcorder near the tweeter. You can hear that, that hiss. When I turn off the preamp, it's quiet. Turn it back on, hiss. Because it, the amplifier has so much gain, it's, it's not noisy itself. It's the noise from the preamp that it's amplifying. So now I'm going to insert that resistor and we'll see how the amplifier performs. And before I forget, this is when I unplug the bootstrap capacitor. See how much smaller the gain gets? I'm going to plug that back in. Gain goes way up because like I said, the bootstrap circuit's emulating a constant current source and the impedance of a constant current source is very high. Okay, so what I did is put a 4.7K resistor in series with the input, and I'll move the input signal to that side of the resistor. And look at that. The signal has dropped significantly. Again, that's the output. So now I have to turn the preamp way up to get the same signal that we had before. So let me adjust that so we have about two volts. And I'll move the scope to the input. See what signal level we're at now. So now it's 220 millivolts. Before it was, what, 22 millivolts? So we're about an order of magnitude higher. And 200 millivolts for this amp is about right. It would work good with a headphone type music player. So I think 4.7K is a good value to use.
noise. I can't hear the noise. I, I could probably hear if I put my ear up to the tweeter, but the fan on the scope and the, you know, it's kind of masking anything. But it's pretty obvious that when I turn the amplifier, or the, I'm sorry, the preamp on and off, that that nasty noise level is gone now. So that's corrected that problem. But what about distortion? Let's take a look at that. Okay, we're clipping off the screen. So I'll turn that off. Well, 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 look at that. There's the pilot signal. And all the harmonics are well below 1% now. The amplifier is performing much better. Remember before, the uh, distortions were almost off the screen. Plus I have the pilot signal showing at a higher level. So while it's no hi-fi amplifier to be sure, distortion levels are quite acceptable. They're you know down about half a percent, which is not too bad for this type of circuit. Okay, let's measure output power again. Let's see, there's clipping. Even the clipping looks nicer now. You know, that goes off the screen, so just have to tone that out. About three volts, and we're clipping a bit. And yeah, two point nine. We'll just say three. Three squared is nine. Nine divided by eight. So our output power into 8 ohm loads at 12 volt supply is 1.125 watts. I want to take a look at 4 ohm power as well. Okay, I have the 4 ohm load connected and adjusted the signal just before clipping. Look at that, it's right at 2.83 volts, which squared is 8 divided by 4, so we're getting 2 watts out of the amplifier. Another thing I want to try is resetting the bias. You know, with negative feedback, I should be able to run the bias a little lower, not have so much distortion. One of the goals of the amp was to have it be battery friendly using uh, lower current. So I set the bias very low and I'm turning it up till that notch is gone. And I'm zoomed in on the area at the, the crossover area okay it looks like it's gone there turn off the signal and yeah now we're only drawing uh, 20 milliamps so another goal has been met having the amplifier working properly now I'm going to put some music through it see what it sounds like Okay, I hooked it up to the speaker, and I played some piano music at really low levels. And that's great for setting the bias. I wanted to see if it sounded good. I thought I heard a bit of distortion, so I turned the bias up just a little bit, right to the point where it flipped over to 30 milliamps on the power supply. And that seemed to take care of the uh, distortion. It sounded clear when doing that. Yeah, it's a little bit higher, but yeah, that's still pretty battery friendly. So now let me play you a sample of music. This is a band called Botany Bay. It's YouTube safe, so that's one reason I can use it, and it's pretty good music. Let me get the microphone here in front of the speaker and shut my mouth and play the music. <laughs> Hopefully it didn't distort when the music got loud. That's one nice thing about dynamically recorded music. You know, it's not compressed. It can get loud. It might overdrive the microphones on the camcorder. Well, I guess that's going to wrap it up for this. Now it's a viable little amplifier. I think it works pretty well. So I added the 4.7K resistor on the input. 
that made the gain come out around 10 times and that value of resistor seems to work pretty well with the uh, the music player so I'm um, you know the uh, preamp still turned down yeah it's somewhere around mid value depending on how loud you want it so I think the gains just right so let me hold this in front of the camera if you want the schematic you can get the information from here And that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a meatloaf. All the extremities are tucked in for safety. All the paws, all the little patty paws and the tails all tucked in. Just resting here, enjoying ourselves. And I guess that's all we're going to get from the Snickers today.